new name. Who dis? Don't worry. You're still getting the same punchy as fuck Ruby. It's still me, guys. The podcast name change happened due to many revelations that I experienced in my first year of podcasting. And yes, it's been one full year. Happy podcast anniversary to me. <laughs> in today's episode, I'm sharing six major lessons that I learned in my first year of podcasting. Lessons that I know will help you elevate your personal and professional life because man, oh man, these lessons have helped me so much. Today's episode is sponsored by How to Conquer Your Bullshit with CPR, my free training that is guaranteed to help you bring your message to the masses. Sign up for this free training on my website, rubyframon.com forward slash CPR. And finally, whether you are brand spanking new to this podcast or you are a loyal thought leader, please make sure that you take a moment to drop a rating and review on iTunes. It truly, truly helps. And I would love to make the charts in year two. So do that now. And finally, Let's kick off this one year podcast anniversary, shall we? Hello, thought leaders. I am so fucking excited because it is officially my very first podcast anniversary. Podcast anniversary? I don't know. <laughs> it's my podcast anniversary. It's been one year since I've been doing this and holy shit, time flies. And I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot about the podcasting world, um, which, and, and all of these lessons have really like translated deeply into my personal life and in, into every other aspect of my business, which is why I really want to share um, the six lessons that I've learned in my first year of podcasting, because I know that these lessons have the power to impact your uh, life, both personally and professionally, because of the impact that these lessons have had in mine. Um, but before we go any further, how fucking awesome is the new podcast name? Today's thought leader came to me in a download, um, and what I mean by download, for those of you who aren't into the woo-woo side of things, um, I had been wanting to change the name of the podcast because when I attended the New Media Summit, um, where I was featured as an icon of influence, and this event took place in Austin, Texas in September, um, this is a strictly podcasting event, so it's for podcasters only. And when I got there, I had a few people come up to me and say, hey, so your podcast is about love and dating, right? Or hey, so you're a love and relationship coach, right? And I was just like, what? This is so far from what I do which led me to dive deeper into, you know, the podcasting app. So I went in the podcasting app and I looked at my, my podcast and I realized that the way that the podcast shows up in the directory, I mean, basically all you see is love punch with my picture and nothing else. The description doesn't show up. My original thinking when I released Love Punch, the podcast, was I want to release a podcast with um, the brand that I had already built online. And Love Punch came about years ago when I first started, and it's, it's really about my delivery. I'm a very loving coach. I'm a very loving person, but my delivery is very punchy because I'm here to give you that punch of reality that most people are too fucking afraid to do. Hence, Love Punch. That didn't really translate in the podcasting world, which is what I learned at the New Media Summit. So since September, I'd been sitting with the idea of changing the name on the podcast anniversary, but I couldn't really find a name that really fit. And so I sat with it and I sat with it and I asked a lot of people and people were giving me like really fucking crazy name ideas, which I didn't like. <laughs> so I flipped it to the universe, to God, and I said, hey, like, just drop me a line. Let me know what you think the new podcast name should be. 
and it literally, literally dropped in and I downloaded it. And today's thought leader, I feel is super clear, super concise. It talks about what this podcast is all about. It also talks about who this podcast is for. Um, and in the podcasting world, the more clarity, clarity you have, the easier it is for your audience to find you. Um, so the podcast is now today's thought leader, FYI, but that doesn't change my delivery. You can still expect to receive the same loving yet punchy delivery from your favorite fucking coach, AKA me. So we are in at the end of year one, going into year two, the podcast name has changed. And I want to share with you six lessons that I learned in my first year of podcasting. So let's dive right in. The reason that these lessons are so powerful is because I believe in evolution. I believe in growth. I believe in change. And um, in order to make those things happen in your life, you can never be too good for your own evolution. And what I mean by this is you've got to kick your pedestal to the curb. Lessons only appear in your life when you're open to receiving them. And when you're too busy trying to position yourself as an expert, you'll never learn, which means you'll never grow. Um, so a lot of quote unquote experts are actually living inside their comfort zones without realizing it because they're refusing to see or seek out any other opportunities for learning. So you've got to be open to learning. You've got to be open to adapting your ways. You have to be open to owning your shit so you can create the space needed for evolution, which is why I really treated this first year of podcasting as one giant learning experience. I knew nothing about this world and I dove right in. Um, so the first lesson I want to share with you is um, lesson number one. Confidence creates a solid foundation for your presence, okay? Confidence creates a solid foundation for your presence. You've probably heard the quote, your presence speaks before you do, or your energy speaks before you do. And this is so, so true. And in the podcasting world, if you're listening to it in the traditional form of podcasting, which is audio only, um, you're only hearing my voice right? So you're only hearing my voice. You're not seeing me. You're not, you're not um, experiencing me in person. You're just hearing the audio file of my voice. And if, that, if I'm not exuding confidence in what I have to say, then that's going to create a disconnect between me and my audience. Every single conversation and interaction that you have in your life plays off of your presence, your energy, your being, what you're bringing to the table other than your voice and um, your physical movements. There's so much that lies beneath that. And confidence is the thing that creates a solid foundation for that presence. So the more confidence you are, the more confident you are, the more confidence you exude, the stronger your presence becomes. And this is something that I learned now, most of you are probably like, but wait, you're, were you not already confident? Yes. I consider myself a really confident person, but, um, over, I'll say this, I'm a forever student of confidence. Uh, my confidence grows with each and every single day. There are days where my confidence feels like it's shot. Um, I'm human. This happens. And when I entered the podcasting world here, all of a sudden was something new, something I'd never, ever done before. I've done tons of video. I've been on YouTube since 2014. Like I do Facebook lives. I do IGTV video. I can handle, but for some reason, podcasting scared the shit out of me because of the fact that, um, I knew my audience would only be connecting to the sound of my voice. And that is different. Um, podcasting also scared me because I didn't know how to do it, quote unquote, right. I didn't know how to do it correctly. And so I just dove right in. I didn't understand um, the best ways to grab my listeners' attention. Like it's, it's just a totally different world. So if you go back and, and listen to my first few episodes, you'll notice that 
my conversations with people, so when I have guests on the show, have become way more powerful since I first began due to my confidence. And my solo episodes have become way more uh, powerful um, due to my confidence. And because of my confidence, it creates a better connection with you, my audience. It makes you want to listen more. Am I right? <laughs> like, do I have your attention? So confidence creates a solid foundation for your presence, not only in the podcasting world, but in real fucking life. And this was such a, a moment or an experience of practice for me to see all the ways in which confidence impacts the way in which I put myself out there and I connect to my audience and I create the impact that I want to create. So in order to create that solid foundation for your presence, in order to create a presence that is both enjoyable to be around and perhaps slightly addicting and um, makes people want, have, want to have more, then you've got to step into that confidence. And the best way to do that, like, is, is the way in which I've, I've shown you, I've demonstrated for you with this podcast. I dove right in. I didn't know anything about the podcasting world. I just fucking went for it. And I will admit, the first couple of episodes were scripted. I had scripts. This is where I insert the monkey hiding its eyes emoji. Yep, I did that. <laughs> now I, I go script free. I might have a few notes, but it was the, the process of act actually doing it, doing the thing that helped me build the confidence that I now have with my podcast. So for you listening, listening, whatever it is that you want to do, you're not going to magically wake up one day with the confidence that you feel you need to do that thing. You just have to fucking do it. And the more that you do it, the more confident you'll become, the more amplified your presence becomes. So confidence creates a solid foundation for your presence. That was the first lesson I learned in my first year of podcasting. Lesson number two in my first year of podcasting, and this one's probably one of my favorites, my house, my rules. When I first started having conversations on my podcast with guests. How do I put this? Um, let's just say I was way too worried about making them feel comfortable than taking a stand for, for what I believe in and what I really wanted my podcast to be. So what this looks like is um, it's okay to have boundaries. It's okay to set expectations. And in fact, it's necessary to have boundaries and to set expectations in order to honor who you are. For example, setting boundaries is a way for you to honor something about yourself. You know, a lot of people talk about boundary setting with people. Like I'm not going to let toxic pe people in my life. And if someone shows up and they, they're toxic towards me, that's when I'll walk away. That is a boundary. And that boundary is protecting something within you. So in this specific, specific example that I gave about the toxic person, this is protecting your confidence or your worth or your comfort or whatever it is that you don't want that toxicity to infiltrate. So it's really important to set these boundaries for yourself. And for me, it was setting those boundaries within my podcast. What do I stand for? What will I not stand for? What will I not tolerate on my podcast? And the expectations, that was really big. Um, so for me, in order to qualify as a guest on my podcast, and I can say this now with full certainty because I'm here at the one year mark. <laughs> I may not have been able to say this in my first five episodes, but I can say this now with full certainty. In order to be on my podcast, you must be willing to have the conversations that you may not necessarily want to have because I'm going to take you there. I'm a trained coach and I am uh, most, what I crave most with my podcast is to dive deep into the conversations that people aren't really having. 
Um, so you're not going to ever hear the traditional like interview questions on this podcast. You may have noticed that already. This is not the place where you're going to come to to hear someone's story. This is the place where we get real and we dive deep. And I I get to ask the hard questions without worrying about someone feeling scared or intimidated or um, like they don't want to open up to share. My house, my rules. Now, I'm going to admit I've released a few episodes. I will not name what those episodes are, but I've released a few episodes in this first year of podcasting that I really am not proud of. Um, and the reason I'm not proud of these episodes, and, and honestly, there's probably there's two that I can think of off the top of their head. There might be three, but there's two that I can think of. And it's because I was not being direct enough in terms of what I really wanted out of that conversation. And I let my guests kind of have their way and um, stay closed and not open up and not dive deep. And that's not what I'm about. So my house, my rules moving forward, um, expect to have, uh, to listen to deeper conversations between me and my guests. And the way that this translates in real life, both professionally and personally, is you have to think of your life from your viewpoint, from, from you living your life. It's your house, your rules. You get to set, you get to create and set the boundaries that you want in your life and in your business. And you get to create and set the expectations that you want in your life and your business. And you get to abide by those boundaries and expectations. And that's important. Because you're, in doing so, you're honoring you and you're doing what's best for you and um, you're protecting you. So that's important. So that's lesson number two, my house, my rules. Lesson number three in um, my first year of podcasting is uh, being a student is more relatable than being an expert. Mm-hmm. In... In our landscape today, people are striving to become experts. They're striving to become gurus. They're striving to become um, the leading force behind X, Y, and Z. Like this is what people are striving to do. And in doing so, many of these people are forgetting the necessity of being a student. Um, I, and let let's be real. Trying to come off as an expert all the fucking time is really exhausting. It's really exhausting because if you're trying to be, to be seen as an expert all the time, then you're probably pretending for most of that time, <laughs> right? Like you're probably faking it for most of that time. And that is exhausting. Um, when you allow yourself to be a student, it creates space for deeper conversations and insights and it allows for growth and opportunity and evolution. So for me, in, in my podcast, it's been really cool because my first, I don't know, probably like 30, maybe 30 conversations or so, um, I wasn't showing up as my boldest, most badass self. I wasn't really owning my gifts. And I wasn't, um, I admittedly, it wasn't that I was trying to come off as an expert, but I really wanted to be, okay, sure. Let's just say I was trying to come off as an expert. Let me just own my shit there. Maybe I was trying to come off as an expert and I wasn't really owning the opportunity that I have with my podcast. And it wasn't until I heard, um, a fellow podcasting friend say, like, I love having, having interviews and conversations on my podcast because I can turn into the student and learn from these amazing, incredible experts. And when he said that, it just flipped my mindset around this. And I was like, wow, wait a second. Whatever it is that I want to learn about, I can just find an expert in that area and bring them on my podcast and learn. And so that's what I started doing. I started booking um, more and more people in this space who could teach me and my audience something. And in those episodes, I start to get super curious. Um, I ask a lot of deep questions. I open myself up to, to not knowing the answers, to not 
knowing about um, everything that they're sharing and instead to ask more and more questions. So you'll notice, um, especially in year two, how deep I dive into curiosity with my, with my conversations um, because I'm really truly learning from my guests in every single episode because this allows me to deepen my evolution and um, fast track my growth, which is super powerful. So that's lesson number three, being a student is more relatable than being an expert. Oh, and, and the relatability piece, if I were to come off as an expert all the fucking time on this podcast, I can guarantee it would create a major disconnect between me and you because you don't really, like, quite frankly, we don't really as a society want to listen to people who think that they're perfect all the fucking time. We like to know that the person that we're learning from is actually a human being and that we can relate to them in some way, shape or form. And by kicking the pedestal to the curb and showing up as a student for life, you create that relatability. This translates into your personal and professional life because you don't have to be worry about being perceived as an expert all the fucking time. Like kick your pedestal to the curb and allow yourself to be a student for a moment or two and create that real relatability with your audience and with those people around you. Because that is not only going to deepen the connection with the people around you, it's also going to help amplify your growth. So that's lesson number three. Lesson number four in my first year of podcasting, clarity is attractive. Oh, yes, people. I should just change that to clarity is sexy. Clarity is sexy as fuck. <laughs> um, now, I am a big fan of not waiting until you have all the answers or the full vision or like absolute clarity to move forward. I'm a big fan of just taking some fucking action because clarity isn't created by sitting on your ass and twiddling your thumbs and, and meditating and, and journaling. That's, that's not how it's really created. That's some of it for sure. I meditate, I journal, I get some clarity that way, but we gain the most insights for clarity when we're actually doing the thing when we're taking action. So for example, with my podcast, the more episodes I recorded, the more I began to learn and the more clarity I received in, re in regards to which direction I wanted to take this in. Action creates clarity. Um, but the more clarity you can offer at the beginning, the easier it becomes to achieve what you set out to achieve and attract what you're seeking to attract. Um, so my podcast name, for example, I shared that story earlier. Love Punch, it's a catchy title for sure. Um, it definitely has everything to do with my delivery. However, it's, it doesn't provide clarity to someone who doesn't know me at all and is just searching through their podcast app. It, it provides them with no clarity in regards to what this podcast is about. So it's easy for my target ideal audience to then um, just pass me by because they have no idea that this, po you know, the podcast Love Punch had anything to do with them. But today's thought leader, now that is relatable to my audience. They get it. It's clear. It's a podcast for today's thought leader. It's a podcast for leaders. It's a podcast for people who are seeking to rise into thought leadership. It's a podcast that highlights thought leadership. It's super fucking clear. So the more clarity you can offer at the beginning, the easier it becomes to achieve what you set out to achieve and to attract what and who you're seeking to attract because clarity, um, very much like authenticity, is autofiltration. So the more clear you are, the more you filter out the crap you don't want. Um, and in this specific example with my podcast, easier for me to filter out the audience I don't want. So those who were seeking love and relationship and dating, I mean man, they were probably severely disappointed when they started listening <laughs> to my podcast and realized it had nothing to do with relationships. Um, it just makes it easier for your audience to find you. So whatever it is that you're doing in your business and in your life, the more clarity you can bring to the table, the better, and then continue to take action towards that clarity to create even more clarity. Lesson number five that I learned in my first year of podcasting. And this was a really important one for me. Stand by what you have to offer. 
Now, if you go back and listen to, let's say the first 30 to 35 podcast episodes, you'll notice that I never mention any of my products or services, not one. I don't mention a goddamn thing. I don't mention my coaching packages or programs. I don't mention my event. I don't mention my free training. I don't mention any of that shit. And I don't, this was, this wasn't intentional, but, um, it was part of, (coughs) (coughs) excuse me. This wasn't intentional at all, but it soon became a habit that I hid behind. So when I say stand by, when by what, by what you have, what you have, you have to offer, whatever it is, a product, a service, an invitation, an event, whatever it is that you have the ability to enroll people into, you have to stand by it a thousand percent. So if you're going to create a program or a service, Make sure that you believe in it before you start to offer it. Because when you don't believe in the power that it has to like transform lives or provide people with something that they need, when you don't believe in that yourself, you're most likely going to hold back on sharing it with the world. So for me, this was all about um, believing that my audience would actually want to continue this journey with me outside of the podcast. This was me believing that what I had to offer was of such value that I could offer it on my podcast to my audience, most of which are just meeting me for the first time. You need to stand by what you offer in order to enroll people in what you have to offer. And that, again, begins with first enrolling you. And think of it this way. You're doing a complete disservice to your audience by not offering them your products or services because you're then not inviting them to continue this journey with you, right? It's like you're giving them a taste. Here's a taste of what I can offer. And that's what I'm doing with the podcast. Here's a taste with my podcast. And that's where I put down the brakes. That's not very fucking fair, is it? You want your audience to continue this journey with you and they can only do that if you share your offers with them, if you talk about your products, your services, and that begins by first enrolling yourself. You need to stand by what you have to offer. So now you've probably noticed in the past like 15 or so episodes, I've been sharing about my event or my free opt-in or my free training because I believe in these things so much and I believe that my audience wants it. So whatever it is that you're doing in your business, whatever it is that you're doing with your mission, with your legacy, make sure that you stand by what you have to offer because then and only then will you be able to share it. And sharing is (laughs) the, I want to insert the really cheesy quote here. Sharing is caring people. Sharing is caring. You want to honor your audience by providing them an opportunity to continue this journey with you. So that was lesson number five. Lesson number six, which is the final lesson that I learned in my first year of podcasting, is listen deeply and speak with intention. Now, when I was growing up, I used to get, um, you know, we used to get these report cards in Canada, uh, that were really thorough. Like we would get graded on things like listening and speaking. And when I was in grade school, I would always get, this was consistent for like three years in a row on all my report cards. I would get like a C plus in listening and an A in speaking. (laughs) And I'd come home and my dad would tell me the same thing every single time. He'd say, 
sweetie, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. You have to listen more and speak less. <laughs> now, any any time that um, I'm faced with this, an opportunity to listen deeper, I think of my dad and I, I think about the fact that, yes, we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Um, but this goes way further than that. This is about listening deeply and really hearing what the person is saying, really being able to feel between each word um, and listen for the words that are unspoken, right? Because there's a difference between just like hearing someone and actually listening deeply to them. In my podcast, the most powerful questions that I've asked my guests are the ones that come to me on the spot. And the most powerful insights that I've shared in my solo episodes are, are the ones that come to me on the spot. They're the things that are not rehearsed, planned, because when you give yourself the opportunity to listen deeply to others, to your audience, you gain insights that perhaps you wouldn't have gained before if you were just too busy trying to fill the space with speaking. Um, deep listening creates space for flow and real connection. One of the reasons I decided to host conversations on my podcast versus interviews, like most podcasts, is because I had already, I've been a guest on um, over 50 podcasts and the majority of them have been, like the majority, like 85% of them have been interview style. And when I get on the podcast at the beginning, like my first five or six podcast interviews I ever did, it was really exciting. It was really exciting to be like on a podcast, have someone interview me. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. But after the first, you know, five or six, I realized like a lot of people are asking the same question. What's your story? What? When, what happened at your rock bottom moment? When did you experience the biggest transformation in your life? And I was like, wow, this shit is really boring. I'm kind of just repeating myself over and over again. And quite frankly, this shit is on my website. So if someone wants this, they can go to my website under my story and just read all about it. It also created this really, um, uh, I was going to say a really weird flow, but it wasn't a flow at all. It felt like discombobulating to be in that conversation because they would ask, um, yeah, tell me about the lowest point in your life. And then the next question would be something like, what are your top five books that you recommend? And it's just like this complete fucking discombobulating conversation that had zero flow. And I just, as a guest, didn't enjoy that. And I couldn't imagine what it was like to be a listener. and Really, for my audience, if I were to continue to share all these different podcasts that I've been on, but I'm answering the same questions, it's boring. There's no reason for you to listen to it. You've heard me say this shit a thousand times. So for me, my intention when I first started the podcast was like, I just want to have conversations. So I'd go in and at the beginning, I would research the shit out of my guests and create like a few core questions, but really just let myself flow with the conversation. So I'm proud to say that at this point in time, I don't have any questions that I plan ahead of time. I literally just flow off the cuff. And the way that I come up with my questions is I listen deeply to my guests. And I've learned through my experience in my first year of podcasting that this deep listening has provided me with deeper insight so that I can then speak these questions with greater intention rather than just trying to fill the silence or read off a script or ask, you know, what I think I should be asking. Um, deep listening has allowed for a stronger flow in, in each of these conversations. So when it comes to your life and your business, ask yourself, am I listening deep enough? to my audience, to the people around me. Because then and only then can you speak with stronger intention. Otherwise, what happens is you're just speaking for the sake of speaking. And, and that, <laughs> that doesn't really create a connection with your audience. You wanna speak with intention. You wanna speak with the intention to convey a message, to create a connection, to close a loop, to provide a lesson, whatever it is. You want to speak with intention. You can only do that 
by first listening deeply, whether it's to your guests on your podcast, your clients, or your audience. So let me recap the six lessons that I learned in my first year of podcasting. So lesson number one, confidence creates a solid foundation for your presence. Okay. Your presence speaks before you do. So show up with confidence. Lesson number two, my house, my rules. It's okay to have boundaries and expectations. And in fact, it's necessary in order to honor you. Uh, lesson number three, being a student is more relatable than being an expert. Stop trying to be an expert. It's so fucking exhausting. Be a student. This is going to allow for deeper con connections, deeper conversations, and um, more momentum with your evolution. Lesson number four, clarity is attractive or shall we say clarity is sexy as fuck. Um, clarity makes it easier for your audience to find you and it acts as auto filtration. So the more clarity you can offer at the beginning, the better. And then remember, the more action you take, the more clarity you'll receive. Lesson number five, stand by what you have to offer. So before enrolling people in what you have to offer, you have to first enroll yourself. And by not making these offers, you are doing a complete disservice to your audience because you're not asking them to continue this journey with you. So give them the opportunity to experience more of you by standing by what you have to offer and making those offers loud and clear. And then finally, lesson number six, listen deeply and speak with intention. So deep listening creates space for flow and real connection. It also provides you with deeper insights. So you can speak them with intention rather than just trying to fill the space. My final thought for today's episode is, let me think. Never be too good for your own evolution. Kick your fucking pedestal to the curb and be open to learning, be open to adapting, be open to owning your shit so that you can create the space needed for evolution. I expect my podcast to continue evolving because I'm committed to my own evolution as a human being. I'm committed to my personal growth. And the more that I grow and evolve, the more that evolution seeps into everything that I do. I don't have a concrete plan ever for anything because I'm so open to evolution. In fact, I welcome it. I see evolution as improvement, as adaptability, as getting better in time. So today, the podcast is switched over. It's now called Today's Thought Leader. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this name change, on these lessons that I've shared with you today, on how you've been enjoying the podcast so far. So please reach out to me on social media. You can hit me up at I am Ruby on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. And I do respond to my messages, to the tweets, to the DMs. Um, so please do hit me up because I'd really love to hear from you. I also want to drop this reminder right here, right now to leave a rating and review. If you have yet to do so, please leave a rating and a review and share this podcast with a friend. Um, help me reach the charts, yo. It'd be amazing to reach a chart in year two, don't you think? <laughs> um, other than that, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. If you've been tuning in since episode one. Thank you. I am so fucking grateful for, um, your commitment, uh, to being on this journey with me and, and to all my other listeners, thank you so much for joining me on today's thought leader. So excited. I love saying that <laughs> where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up and create a movement. Now, if you're looking to bring your message to the masses, download my free online training at rubyfreeman.com forward slash CPR. See, lesson number five, stand by what you have to offer. <laughs> Drop a rating or interview and hit me up on social media. Connect with me. Let me know how you're enjoying the podcast, what you think of the name change, share it with a friend. And finally, that's it. I've got tons of amazing, and I'm talking about amazing fucking guests lined up for year two. Um, 
and I've been having so much fun recording these conversations. So stay tuned because um, all of this is going to kick off next week with a very, very, very special client feature series where I'm releasing 10 episodes back to back. Um, and I'm having conversations, really awesome conversations with incredible and client incredible clients who have inspired me. So stay tuned for that. That's coming up to kick off year two, um, deeper conversations, deeper insights, amazing guests, and I'm setting better boundaries, <laughs> showing up stronger and punchier than ever. Thank you again for being a loyal thought leader. And I will see you here next week when we kick off my client feature series.